This video is about hyperconics and specifically about hyperbolas. Now hyperbolas are the ones that open up like this, left and right, or they can open up, there are two parabolas that face opposite directions. They can open up up and down. So both of these are hyperbolas and their orientation is just different. So let's look at the equation. And our goal on the first set of problems here is to write the equation from the graph. All right. Now, some things you want to notice about it. Notice that this one opens left and right, which means it's along the x-axis. So I want the equation that starts with x squared. Okay, notice I have two equations. One is x starts with x squared. The other one starts with y squared. I want the x squared one because it opens along the x-axis, opening left and right. Now, h and k are the center, like always. So let's start this. Okay, if h is 0, x minus 0 is still just x. So I'm going to put x squared. y minus k, k is 0, so y squared. It's always going to equal 1. Now let's talk about a and b. a is the distance horizontally from the outer, from the hyperbola to the center. Okay? Horizontal distance from the hyperbola, which is here, and the center, which is here. So how many units difference is that? It goes from 0 to 2, so that's a unit of 2 and then I square it. b squared in this equation is the vertical distance from the center to the top of an imaginary rectangle. Okay, It's like a hyperbola it kind of goes around this rectangle. And you'll have that point on each of your graphs to help you gauge what is that value if it's not obvious. All right. So in this, this graph I have this point 2, 3. So I'm thinking at the vertical distance. At zero, at center is at zero, right? Y is zero. So what is the y value at the top of that little triangle? It's a three. So I put a three and I square it. So let me clean it up. We have x squared over four minus y squared over nine equals one. And that's my equation of the hyperbola. Let's do this again. Notice this one opens left and right as well, so hopefully you know which equation to use. We're going to start with the x equation because it's opening left and right. So the center is at 2, 0, so that's my h and that's my k. So let's start there. So x minus h is x minus 2 squared minus y minus k is minus 0, so I don't need anything there, equals 1. Now let's figure out a. a, remember, is the horizontal distance from the hyperbola to the center. So the hyperbola to the center. The hyperbola is out here at 5. My center was at 2, so what's the difference here between 2 and 5? Well, that's 3. b squared is the vertical distance from the center to the top of my little rectangle. Okay, So here's your point on the outer edge. It kind of gives you an idea of vertical distance. So it's going from 0 to 4. So that's 4 units, right? So that's what b is, and I'm going to square it. So then we clean up our equation. x minus 2 squared over 9 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. All right, let's try another one. This hyperbola, notice it opens up and down. That's different. All right, so since it's opening up and down, I'm going to use this equation because the y squared is first. It's a vertical hyperbola, if you will. Now, it doesn't have the triangle or the rectangle drawn, but you can see this point out here, and it's kind of outlining this rectangle that the hyperbolas kind of go around, if you will. The center is at 0, 0. That's my h and k. All right, so we can begin writing our equation. So y minus k is y minus 0, so it's squared. Minus x minus h, well, h is 0, it's squared. Okay, so what's going on under y here? Well, that's a squared. That is the vertical distance from the center to the outer edge, all right? So what is the vertical distance here? Well, from 0 to 5, that's my indicator of what that point is. It's hard to read that graph. But since y is 5, that tells me it's going from 0 to 5. So 5 is my a value. And then b is the horizontal distance. Okay, from the center to the outer edge. Well, that's my x value here, from 0 to 12. It's 12 units out, so that would be a 12, and I'd square it. So let's clean it up. y squared over 25 minus 
x squared over 144 equals 1. All right. Very similar to an ellipse, but notice there's a minus sign. And that beginning term tells you which way direction it goes, right? All right, let's try one more. Look at this one. Notice which direction this one's opening. This one's opening up and down again, so I need this equation. No, our center is right here, so that's my H and K. So let's do this. X, I'm sorry. So Y minus K. Well, K is 3. So Y minus 3 squared minus X minus H. Well, H is 0, so this is squared. Equals 1, always equals 1. Now, underneath that, okay, this is the vertical distance from the center to the, um, the hyperbola. So from the center to the hyperbola, how many units am I moving? Well, from 3 to 8 is how many units? That's 5 units. So 5 squared. Whatever is under the x is your horizontal distance. Now here's your little rectangle. It's harder to see, but here's your point on that outer edge of the rectangle. So think about your h value of your center, which is 0, and the h value of that point. It's moving to 2 units to the left, so that's a distance of 2, and i got to square it. So y minus 3 squared over 25 minus x squared over 4 equals 1. There is my equation for this hyperbola. Hopefully that makes some sense. Now, how about writing the equation by <coughs> completing the square? Um, this is like we did the other day, very similar. You're going to have to complete the square, keeping it in this framework, okay? So x squared is first, so I know it's this equation. Um, x squared minus y something y squared, that's in this right format already, equals 36. So the biggest issue with this equation is that it does not equal 1. In order for this to equal 1, I'm just going to divide each of my terms by 36 and reduce. So 4 goes into 36 9 times. 9 goes into 36 4 times. 36 divided by 36 is a 1. So here's my equation. Now notice the directions. Write the equation. We did that. Identify the center. Well the center is HK, remember? Well that's 0 and 0. And the major axis Remember with hyperbolas, it's just the front one that's in the equation. So in this one, it's along the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. All right, let's try the next one. All right, on example six, we've got to do more steps on this one. It's not as clean. So we have two terms with y, two terms with x. So the first thing you want to do is take out coefficients. So notice in the y's I can take out a 9. Oops. y squared minus 2y minus, and then these two I can take a 16 out. That leaves me with x squared minus 2x equals 151. All right. Now we complete the square. That's that little trick I showed you. All right, so leave 9 alone. I'm going to take the y. Minus stays minus. Half of 2 is 1, and I square it. Bring down your minus sign. 16 comes right down. x, half of 2 is 1, so I leave it negative, though, and square it. Equals 151. Now we have to balance our two sides, all right? So negative 1 squared is, is positive 1. Positive 1 times 9 is 9. So I need to add 9 more on the right to make this balance. Over here, I have negative 1 times 2. That's positive 1. However, positive 1 times a negative 16, don't forget that negative, means I have to subtract 16 over here. So now if I clean it up, y minus 1 squared minus 16, x minus 1 squared, 151 plus 9 is 160. 160 minus 16 is 144. All right, so we're close. Look, we have our minus sign. Everything's okay. We need to get rid of this 144 because it has to equal 1. 
So I divide by 144. All right, so let's think about this. If you need to, pull out your calculators. Uh, 9 goes into 144 16 times. So this reduces. 16 goes into 144 9 times. So that reduces to a 9. 144 into 144 is just a 1. So we've written our equation. Oops, there we go. So remember, you also need to tell me what is the center. Well, the center of this one is 1, 1. Remember to change the sign of H and K. And the major axis is the first axis listed in your equation. So this one is a Y. All right? Let's try another one. This one, not so nice. You're going to have to group them first and then take out coefficients. So we have 9x squared, and I'm going to move minus 72x next to it, minus y squared plus 8y plus 119. Notice also I have a constant here, and I want to move that constant over. So, um, all right, so now let's look at these two. I can take out a 9 out of both of those. So I have x squared minus 8x minus, I don't need to take the coefficient out of these two. I'm going to leave it as y squared, oops, y squared plus 8y equals negative 119. All right, now I'm ready to complete the square. So my 9 stays the same. I need to complete this, so I'm going to do x, half of 8 is 4, bring the negative down, and square it, minus y, half of 8 is 4, but I add this time, square it, equals 119. So let's think about what we need to do to balance this, all right? So what's happening here? I've got negative 4 squared. Well, that's 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 9 is 144, so I've got to add 144 over here to balance. Here I have 4 times, or 4 squared is 16, times a negative 1. There's like a negative 1 here. So 16 times negative 1 is negative 16, all right? So if I add all that up in order to balance this guy, I'm going to have 9 times x minus 4 squared minus y plus 4 squared equals, if I use your little calculators, whatever you need to do, this all comes out to 9 right here. So now I need to just divide each term by 9. So here I'm going to have x minus 4 squared over 1. If you want to put a 1, that's fine. y plus 4 squared over 9. That doesn't really reduce. 9 over 9 is 1. All right, so I have my equation. Center, h and k. Remember to switch your signs. So h would be a positive 4. k is a negative 4. And the major axis, remember that's the first axis listed. Well, in this case, it's x. So this is an x-axis. One more example. If you think you got it, you don't have to watch it, but if you need one more example, stay tuned, okay? So look, y squared's first, and my x's and y's are grouped together, constants on the right, we're in good shape. So let's complete, let's uh, first, remember we're going to take out the coefficients. It's first step. So I'm going to take out a 4. y squared plus 4y is left, minus, I don't need to take out a coefficient of these two because my x squared is just x squared. All right, now, now I need to complete the square. Leave the 4 alone. This is y plus, leave that alone. Half of 4 is 2, and I square it. Minus x, keep the plus there. Half of 6 is 3. Squared equals 9. Now let's think about what we need to do to balance this. What do I need to do over here to balance what I did on the left? 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, so I have to add 16. 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 1 here, don't forget that, is minus 9. So now when I clean this up, I have 4 times y plus 2 squared minus x plus 3 squared equals, well, 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 minus 9 is back to 16. There it is. 
Not quite finished because I need it to equal 1, so I need to divide each term by 16. And then my final product is the reduced form. y plus 2 squared over 4 minus x plus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. There's my equation. And then center, h and k. Remember, h goes with x, though, so be careful. h is going to be negative 3. k is going to be negative 2. The major axis is the first one listed in your equation. In this case, it was y, so this is the y-axis. So this one's opening up and down. All right? Hopefully, you got a hang of this, and this won't be any issue for you. We'll see you in class.